Are you selling your soul to DoorDash? Have you sold your soul to DoorDash? We're going to talk about it on this segment of The Gig Geezer. There are more and more drivers out there who are, and I'll say some perhaps grudgingly and some even willingly, those drivers are giving in to DoorDash's dynamic repeated manipulation, both subtle and overt, as the app platform continues to introduce and implement changes that muddy the definition of an independent contractor in gig food delivery work. Not only that, our willingness to maintain higher acceptance rates and willingness to go along with the subterfuge titled Carbon Crystal Partitions of Measurement for the purpose of gathering additional data to be used for refining machine learning and, in the process, advancing artificial intelligence. In exchange, you are being led to believe that you may be in a position to gain priority or even higher priority for higher paying orders. What are these higher paying orders? Actually, it's orders in which customers have tipped more than the typical rudimentary and perfunctory orders that come across our phone screens more than 90% of the time. But in order to maintain the qualifying acceptance rate, you still have to accept many of these same typical rudimentary and perfunctory orders that you think you would have avoided. Oh, and by the way, and also more than 90% of the time, DoorDash has done nothing about increasing its base pay. Now, I'm sure already by now, I've lost some people because this is nothing that they want to hear. But this is the very thing that you need to hear, not only for your ability to thrive on the app, it's really for the saving of your soul. Now, and we're not talking about salvation as in what's involved in religious discourse, but it is a kind to it. Your deliverance and your personal redemption are in your ability to recognize truth and make better decisions. These decisions will give you a greater sense of freedom and perhaps still see the same financial results that drew you to the app platforms like DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, and the like. Before I proceed with this segment of the Gig Geezer, I want to reiterate that I'm not jealous of you drivers who continue to push Tony Zhu's agenda. I'm not jealous of you who've worked who knows how many hours at a time, hell, a lot more than I would work in any given week, just, just to proclaim what you've made on a single app, which is likely what it would probably take otherwise. I'm not jealous of you if you've willingly failed to acknowledge or recognize how you are being exploited by DoorDash. And I'm not jealous of you who choose to give up your freedom and sense of identity as an independent contractor, and even more importantly, your true value as a person. Nope, not at all. I ain't jealous of you. So if I'm considered negative because I've pointed out these things, so be it. I was approached by some people out of San Francisco back in October and November about my interest in partnering with a publisher who released a book by a guy named Jeff Thomas Black. They said that they'd seen my content here on YouTube and thought that I might be a good fit to share their information and analyses that they had on DoorDash and the gig economy at large. Mr. Black, whom I've yet to meet and have never heard of until this past fall, describes his experience and later makes postulations about being a part of the gig economy, specifically working at platforms like DoorDash. The book he released is titled Full Dash Closure. He's already released parts of it to those of us who have agreed to subscribe. It's available in the traditional text, but also in audiobook and podcast forms. And by the way, the people who approached me have not come back with any affiliate links. So I have zero re financial relationship with Mr. Black's publisher. I'm sharing what I'm sharing after having read enough of his material to where I feel comfortable with sharing it to you, my audience. So if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer or in any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. What I'm going to share in this segment of the Gig Geezer is from Mr. Black's latest dispatch, and I'm highlighting a few things from Chapter 3, which is Defining DoorDash Singularity from his book and what is dated on December 17, 2022. Mr. Black, what I first noticed, says DoorDash rose to prominence in what he described as a rig market. There were no market dominating companies to compete with back in 2019 and 2020. I will, I will also add that timing has been everything so far for DoorDash. 
The pandemic and the subsequent shutdowns introduced many people to apps like DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Instacart, and the like, as well as an unprecedented dependence. From that, from that specific period, DoorDash was the company, or DoorDash is the company that has emerged from what I termed as the golden era of food delivery work, as the number one, as the number one company commanding a market share of 59%. Grubhub, which was number one entering the 2019 to 2020 golden era, plummeted to number three and has about 14% of the market share. And it is teetering on whether it's going to be sold once again. Uber Eats, which has been number two all along, holds about 27% of the market share. Now, some points that Mr. Black went on to say from the chapter, in, this, in the business scheme of DoorDash, the laborers called dashers provide capital resources, repair, maintenance, and fuel, while assuming all operational expenses, providing insurance, labor, benefits, and accepting 100% of business risks and inflation risks. All that under a laughably unfair independent contract agreement that excludes class actions and limits a gig app laboring dashers functional interaction with the DoorDash Corporation. It's inconceivable that any corporation could legally and operationally distance itself further from the human resources completing the tasks it dispatches than DoorDash. In other words, let me let me let me relate another experience. In a similar experience, I recognized something like this in 2019 as Amazon Flex introduced third-party partnerships in building its logistics network to deliver Amazon parcels. Amazon says in its agreement that it is held harmless, meaning that it assumes zero responsibility whenever the shit hits the fan. In other words, that's on you, the third-party contractor. Amazon lends its technology and points people in the right direction to furnish the third-party contractors with the equipment and technical support, but it offers zero financial help, and again, it assumes zero responsibility if anything goes wrong. How is DoorDash likened to it? Well, based on legal precedent, but also you may say um, how um, things have evolved since um, this event occurred, it would be very hard for a DoorDash driver to countersue DoorDash if in the event that while a driver is on the delivery, for example, that driver was involved in an accident that killed someone well, um, like what happened decades ago with uh, Domino's Pizza. That Domino's pizza driver was sued by the victim's family. Of course they would. But the driver countersued Domino's, claiming that he was under pressure by Domino's old ad campaign, if you recall, was that they promised to deliver your pizza in 30 minutes or less. It, as it turned out, Domino's was held responsible. What's likely to happen as we enter into 2023 is that the driver is likely to be responsible for 100%. But there may be a legal loophole in that if the Department of Labor reclassifies us gig delivery drivers on the app as employees, DoorDash may be on the hook. Now, Mr. Black goes on to say in the chapter that in the DoorDash game, dashers are not people with jobs. Their expenses judged by their all-in costs, the sum of their recruitment costs and delivery payments. The regularly used euphemism by executives and engineers alike is efficiency. Efficiency, Mr. Black says, represents minimized total delivery costs. Now, what are some of these expenses? Base pay, peak pay, bonuses for onboarding with DoorDash. In other words, a bonus like you may earn $250 if you complete 250 orders in your first 30 days. That's one of those bonuses. There's earned by time, there's the hourly pay, and there's also the advertising to recruit drivers on the digital and electronic platforms. And at currently, at least based on 2021 numbers, there are over 6 million people who, there are 6 million people who, are act, who have been on the app or completed at least one order for DoorDash in 2021. Now, Mr. Black goes on to say, never has such a positive sounding word been used to represent more evil intent. 
This efficiency, he says, is entirely focused upon a delivery operations variable dwarfed by fees, commissions, and highly inflatable consumer spending. Yet, the variable targeted for manipulation in DoorDash's unconsciously predatory simulated market for exploited human labor. In other words, efficiency, he says, is applied to humans called dashers. The business is manically focused upon efficiency every day, which literally means driving down the all-in cost of dashers, their human fuel. Retain them and get the most you can out of them while systematically driving down their pay in the market simulation. I spoke of something like this in another Gig Geezer segment in which I spoke of how DoorDash is and many of these companies endgame is profitability. This segment of the Gig Geezer, which I, which I titled as Understanding DoorDash's Algorithm, I said they'll achieve profitability at, at some point by replacing us humans by and large with robotics and autonomous vehicles. These companies have invested significantly in this kind of technology. Mr. Black goes on to say, People need to work due to the economic downturn, which is a plus for DoorDash as they prey on that labor pool. DoorDash, he says, has enough drivers to run the game. As I mentioned, over 6 million people were on the app last year who have completed at least one delivery. Thus, savings must come from the cost of delivery and the product improvements. But none of these product improvements include increasing driver pay, or as he said, Dasher's pay. In other words, Many of you who have followed my community posts or simply noticed in some of my segments of the Gig Geezer, I have spoken derisively of thirst. These food gig, these gig food, these gig food delivery app platforms prey upon thirst. And there's lots of it out there. And I've said, I've described how it's out there in my market, the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. So Mr. Black asks, how can DoorDash do that? What magical power do they have over Dashers? Remember, he says, Dashers are not even a part of the DoorDash financial reports. DoorDash, he says, are off the books, simply a non-disclosed expense prior to the reporting of net income. As I mentioned with net income, DoorDash boasts of a 40 plus percent profit margin before they start factoring in expenses. So they're making money. DoorDash, as I've said, and he says in his book, DoorDash, um, openly says that they are a technology company and they avoid even acknowledging the existence of gig labor dashers, those whom they profess to love and support. But I'm going to ask, since we're along these lines of DoorDash being exploitative, why are we letting DoorDash fuck with our minds? And that's a simple question. I've shared bits and pieces what I'm about to add in previous Gig Geezer segments. What I've said is, you're, you're already a DoorDash employee if you do this. And what is this? Ascribe to and willingly work to maintain at least a 50% or higher acceptance rate. What you've chosen to do goes contrary to any definition, any current definition, that is, of being an independent contractor, not to mention it goes contrary to what DoorDash has defined in its current independent contractor agreement from 2022. I've also talked about DoorDash's mind control in this particular segment. I described back in October that they've been playing with drivers' minds by convincing some of us to write our politicians and the Department of Labor in response to a proposal that may reclassify us as employees. That is, those of us who work food delivery gig app platforms. And why not? Why not they reclassify us as employees? We are not independent contractors. That is, those of us who are in business for ourselves. If they're saying one breath, we can pick and choose whatever orders that are offered. Yet in another breath, say, but if you want to get paid, or at least in the, the illusion thereof, you've got to accept more orders. and you'll be in a position to see even better opportunities if you accept more orders. Is that, not is that not manipulation? Is that not exploitation? Now, just to, just to provoke thought, the only way 
that DoorDash can continue achieving its financial goals is by controlling information to the very component of the equation that it claims is a vital part of it. That component is you and that component is me. Remember, they've already tried withholding item counts on orders earlier this year. But what seems to be sticking is this accept more, earn more, whereby you have to maintain at least a 50% or higher acceptance rate at all times in order to receive priority or higher priority on higher paying orders. And again, these higher paying orders are basically orders in which the customer has tipped more than what you usually have seen. And I've gone into much detail about that on these segments, accept less, earn more, and a case why diamond zones don't matter. And by the way, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. Now, again, just to provoke thought, if DoorDash had nobody to deliver its orders, it may damn near cease to operate. It would cause gridlock that Tony Zhu and his like-minded cohorts would deem as their worst nightmare. That same thing goes for Uber, Lyft, Instacart, Grubhub, Amazon Flex, and any of those apps that we have already found to be exploitative and nefarious. And nefarious is just a $5 word for being despicable, immoral, and heartless. I see, now, I see why there's been a great chorus and cry among drivers to strike these apps. The problem is that there are far too many people who will just... Do, the problem is that there are far too many people out there who will just justify going out there regardless of the situation, thinking that, hey, I'm just out here to make whatever I'm going to make. And once I make whatever I'm going to make, I'll just go about my business. And another argument is that why are you willing to deny money from your own personal needs, from your own personal agenda, and maybe just your family just to do something that is likely to fall upon a corporation's deep ears? I get that. But before anybody thinks questionably of me, I'm not advocating any strikes. I just pose the question. If drivers were to just stop altogether, I mean, just stop altogether. If people just stop even getting, if people even stop applying to get on the DoorDash app, if people just abandon DoorDash in its entirety, they would be in trouble. But again, before anybody thinks questionably of me, I am not advocating any strikes and for much as i've shared on this channel i have shared by and large how the gig economy has put me in a position to accomplish things that i may not have even considered five years ago and damn sure 10 years ago just check out this recent segment of the gig user to have some perspective on how i've made it work for me thus far as i read farther into mr black's third chapter several other things came to mind and one of which was confirmed by its end. Now, before I get into that, I want to share at the very least how Mr. Black came up with the term DoorDash singularity. That is linked, he said, to the definition of human perception. And perception is a derivative of the Latin word percepto, which means gathering and receiving. But the key thing that I'm going to highlight from that chapter is that he says, the perceptions of our world, especially if unchecked by perspective and consciousness, make humans easily make humans easily hackable systems for artificial intelligence. In other words, DoorDash's omissions and misrepresentations of information is the very thing that can control us as rats in a maze, or even worse, as slaves. Our freedom is based on knowledge and truth. Now, do you want to continue to be a data point that may prove or not prove these complex mathematical predictions? Do you want to be a data point that learns our tendencies so that it can nudge us in the direction it wants us to go, thereby achieving DoorDash's goal of completing these orders, having made little to no money? In other words, do you want to be pimped? When I think of being pimped, I think of the movie Willie Dynamite. But then again, this is what DoorDash is saying to those of us who are questioning their game. So I go to Willie, I Willie being Tony Zhu, 
and my acceptance rate is less than 15%, which is this most of the time. I want to say at least 90%, 95% of the time. So Tony looks at me and says, Now, the seven girls in this example is six million people. Ten minutes, dig it. This is a business, baby. A production line. And just like GM, Ford, and Chrysler, Willie's coming through. In other words, Tony's saying, I don't give a fuck what you say. Tony's coming through. Now, you go on into the movie, into a subsequent scene, and rightly or wrongly, the movie character, Belle, who was both in association and competition with Willie Dynamite, did say something that was at least profound to me and applicable in this situation. I want to deal with a bigger insult, man. The heat. It's coming down hard. We got to get our shit together. And we always been loose. Dealing off the turf like it was never gonna run dry, that ain't no business. No other game has run so disorganized. Look around. Everything that is taking care of business is together, dig it tight. Together. Except us. Right. And now we feel in the heat. And the action's gonna get scarce, and the turf is gonna get hard. What are you saying, Bill? Now, we've seen these times before. Never so heavy as now. Well, I don't see any other way other than to ride it out. There is a way. We organize. Each of us gets his own turf. That way you can cool all those strange freelance bitches. And when the heat comes down, all you do is cool it for a while. Meanwhile, business is still going on elsewhere. Dig, which takes care of you. The Johns don't panic. And we don't jam up on each other. Really? The organization votes. Man, I thought we was all capitalists. Free enterprise, you dig? Now, this organization would kind of close that off. I mean, in all respect to your idea, Bell. The organization will see that everyone is satisfied. Then there's another problem. My bitches. You saying you can't control your bitches? What I'm saying is they deserve any area they can control. Well, I respect your ambition, Willie, but you got to have vision. Now, I run every kind of bitch, every kind of place, and I know one thing. When it comes down on you, you either collectivize or you run like a solitary rat. And how we strategize, collectivize, and prioritize, that's on us. Now, as I finish up this segment of the Gig Geezer, just know that this is no partnership that DoorDash is selling. It's a facade. And the farther you go along with it, the less of your soul that you'll cling on to and the less of you that you'll even recognize of yourself. Now, in Mr. Black's book, he gave an analogy of taking a red pill and a blue pill. Which one will you choose? And with that, 
This is yet another segment of the Gig Geezer. If you like the content that's been provided in this segment or any other segment, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome the comments in the section below. I'm Ed Wood Lane, and may your grind and may your hustle continue.